Greetings and welcome back to 303, day one of summer school. And we're now going to introduce you to a text called Psalm of Life. Our project is to do an annotation of this, and then we're going to respond to it with some writing. Okay, and this will be the end of our first session together. I hope you have the poem in front of you. Let's be looking at it now, all right? And all we're going to do now is first just read this poem. Now, if you look at this poem really quickly, we can make a 2B observation, rhetoric, real quickly. Do you notice that this poem is divided up? Do you see that? We don't even have to read this poem to see this. Divided up into what we call stanzas. Everybody groovy with that? You got four line stanzas, don't you? How many stanzas? How many parts? How many stanzas? Can you count them up? And then you could take that number times four, and that'll tell you how many lines are actually in this project, huh? See that? Right? Okay. So I think it makes sense for us to go ahead and do an annotation real quickly at level one, okay, of each of these stanzas, shall we? So let's just look at it really quickly. Now, obviously, can I say this out loud? We could, do, we could spend a lot more time with this poem than we're going to spend with it now, all right? So let's just take a look at the poem itself, shall we? Tell me not, I, I hope you're reading, I hope you're reading, just read along with me, just read along with me. Tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream. For the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not what they seem. Life is real. Life is earnest. And the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art, to dust returnest. It was not spoken of the soul. Hmm. Now let's do a quick annotation as we go, shall we? You can write right there on the paper in front of you or on the back of that paper or on another sheet of paper. Okay? We'll just work at level one. What does this text say? And maybe a little at level 2a, what does this text mean? Tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream. Don't tell me, he says, that life is useless. An empty dream. Don't tell me that. He says, I don't want to believe that. For the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not what they seem. Life is not always what it appears. Life is not always what it seems. Sometimes things might seem really bad, but not necessarily. By the way, dude, what should I be writing down right now? You kind of listen to what we say, and then you can just write down right to the right of that stanza at least one thing. Just write down one thing that you think it's saying, right? Life is real. Look at the next stanza. Life is earnest. And the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art to dust returnest was not spoken of the soul. Now this is an interesting idea. It says that even though the body dies, there's this thing called the soul and it keeps living. That's a very interesting concept. Okay? Look at the next one. Not enjoyment and not sorrow is our destined end or way. Are you reading it with me? This is stanza three. Not enjoyment and not sorrow is our destined end or way, but to act that each tomorrow find us further than today. Whoa, what an interesting stanza. Read it with me again. Not enjoyment and not sorrow is our destined end or way. Your life is not about either being really sad or really happy. Well, then what's life about? But to act, are you reading it? But to act that each tomorrow find us further than today. In other words, your life is about every day trying to do it a little bit better. Let's write that down. Every day, try and do it a little bit better. Right? Look at the next one. Art is long and time is fleeting. And our hearts, though stout and brave, still like muffled drums are beating funeral marches to the grave. Now, to understand this word picture, you've got to understand the guy that wrote this. His name is Longfellow. He was an American poet. When he lived during his time, when you died, they came by the house where you died, because you didn't die in no hospital. And they picked up your dead body, and they put it on a wagon. 
And everybody from the town got behind the wagon. And the wagon with the pony went out to the cemetery. Slow. And while you went, you walked all the town behind your body on the wagon. But right behind the wagon was a guy with a drum. And he would drum. Boom. 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 And everyone walked slowly. You may have seen this in a movie once. Right? Longfellow's a poet and he says, hey, 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 you know something that's really weird? If right now you put your hand to your throat and feel your pulse, you'll feel boom, boom, boom. Go back and look at the lines. Art is long and time is fleeting. And our hearts, though stout and brave, still like muffled drums are beating. Funeral marches to the grave. When you're young, it doesn't occur to you, you'll have to leave the park. You don't want to get in the van. When you're young, it doesn't occur to you. You only have a short time on this earth to live. Right? So if you're going to live on this earth, look at the next one. In this world's broad field of battle, in this, by the way, you can circle that funny looking word. We say it, bivouac of life. Be not like dumb driven cattle. Be a hero in the strife. This is a very interesting word picture. It says, hey, you know what? Um... Have you ever seen those guys leading those cows down the road? Dude, I was not raised out here in Wyoming. And I came to visit for the first time and I was very, very tired. And they said, it's going to be great. We're going to the mountains and going to have a trip to the mountains. And I was like, fine. But you know how when you're really tired and you put your head against the window and go to sleep in a car because the car is like really gentle ride. And all of a sudden I noticed that the car had stopped and I opened my eyes. And I heard the sound of cows woo, all around our car. Freaked me out. Right up against the window was the snout of a big cow. And I was totally freaked out. I was like, what is going on? I was from the city. And they said, oh, don't worry. Out here it happens all the time. They lead the cows down the middle of the road. And you basically have to just stop and let the cows go around you. And for the first time in my life, I saw cows up close. And they would walk with their nose stuck right up into the butt of the cow in front of them. And the cow in front of them would like poop and they'd get all over the nose of the cow behind. And I was like, gross. And then I thought it occurred to me, wait a minute. Students at Worland High School are kind of like cows. Walking with their nose stuck into the butt of the next one in front. Doing whatever the person in front of them does, acting like everyone else. In this world's broad field of battle, in the bivouac battlefield of life, be not like dumb, driven cattle. Be a hero in the strife. Be a hero in the strife. Don't be like everyone. Look different. Act different. Be a nonconformist is what Wordsworth says. Longfellow says. The great poets. Whitman says. Whoa. That's a really interesting 3B question. When was the last time you were a hero? By hero here, we mean you are not a cow. You, you didn't do what everyone else did. But notice, sometimes when you're different... The cows will make fun of you. You notice this? Cows will make fun of you. Right? Look at the next one. Trust. Some of you are saying, well, this is an interesting little poem. It has all kinds of messages. Look at the next one. Trust no future. How air pleasant. Let the dead past bury the dead. Act. Act in the living present. Heart within, and God our head. Have you noticed this? Most Worland High School students spend all their time in one of two places. 
They're either taught thinking all the time about the past, the past, the past, the past. Or they're always thinking about the future, the future, the future. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Longfellow points out something fascinating, though. Are you ready for this? There is no past. It's gone. You can't go back and redo it. You can't change it. It's gone. It's over. And there is no such thing as the future. We never get there. Every time we think we're there, it becomes the past. The only thing you have is what? Look at the poem. The present. You've got now. That's all you've got. And he says, act in the living present. Heart within and God or head. Observation. In Greek, actually, they say you can change the past. Wow, this is going to be an important 3A observation from Mr. Uh, Workman. We have a title that we read in high school called The Great Gatsby about a man who was raised poor and fell in love with a rich girl and said, I want that girl. But to get that girl, he needed to have bank. And so he went off and he made a lot of bank. And then he came back to try and get the girl. But the question of the novel is, she's already married to somebody else who has bank. Now what? And if you make money, does that make you somehow different from what you were when you grew up? Or at your heart, are you still the same guy? He changes his name. But behind the name change, you're still the same guy. Because we are what we are. And for her, Daisy, the question is, do I go for him? Or do I stick with what I got? Because she also has a child with her husband. But she's really in love with this guy, Gatsby. Oof. That's an interesting question. Outstanding reference. Look at the next one. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime. I hope you're reading this with me. By the way, for some of us who are improving as readers, I apologize. Didn't mean to scare you. 